Hi, I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Story. We're here at Iron Gate Motor Condo, and I'm with Dominic Rossi in his right garage. Here, Good to see you again. And see Dominic's you. got an amazing car. This car's got a great story. Yes, it does. All right, let me grab the camera so we can get right to that story. What of the cars that we're gonna show today, what's the car that we're featuring right now? This is a 1961, mm -hmm. and it's been completely restored, uh, frame off, restoration, and it started maybe about 10 years ago. Yeah. And it took about four years to restore. Wow. Originally when I bought the car, it was black. And these cars are not coded for color. They weren't coded until 1963. Okay. But when we were taking it apart, we saw some overspray of red and we knew it was a red interior car, red exterior car. So we painted it with the original color red and the 61 is basically the last year that they had the different color coves right here, the white coves. Yes. In 62, they were the same body color. You couldn't get a different color. So one of the ways to distinguish, it's all the same color. Well, come on back with me. Let's take a look at this. Is that right? Yes, pretty much 57 through 61 had the different color coves. They stopped it in 62, and then of course 63 was the body style change. Gotcha. Let's, let's pop, drop back here for a second. Let's take an overall look. And the 61 is somewhat unique with the grill. It's the first year they got away with the teeth that they had since 1953. And it's the full grill. So one of the ways to distinguish quickly it's a 61 is the grill. Correct. Versus the 62, what's some of the, the differences that makes 61 the special feature? Well, pretty much the headlight bezel, the color on the sides, and 61 and 62 are pretty close. But when you take the 57 through 60, there's quite a bit of difference. Come on back with me. Let's get an overall shot of the car. Come on back with me. Go ahead. And when you look at the 61, you can start to see this is the first year that the back sloped down. Prior to that, it was just like the early 53s and 54s where it came straight across. As you see, this is the exact same contour that they went to the C2s. The 63 on up, they started making the back, which they call a dovetail. So this is the first year for the real dovetail. You can see it come back down like this. And you can see that look right there. Let's take an overall look. Come on back with me, Dominic, if you would. And let's take an overall look and just let you gaze on that for a moment. That's a nice look right there. Let's feature some of the pieces here as we get close. We've got the Chevrolet Corvette, and you can see those are the spinners there, and the red, white, and blue on the Corvette there. Is this functional, or is this just all no, it's, ornamentation? It's really not, yeah, pretty much. And these were they called the, the spears. The spears. Wonderful wraparound window. I love how the jewelry comes down into here, into the car, and featuring there. Let's take a look at this tail. Definitely starts to see the next generation right there with that look. Separate piece bumpers here. And the tail lights with a little bit of a rocket. I like this piece in the trunk that you can see is has an embossed look to it. A three yeah, look to it. actually, it is deep. It, it's, it really shows some depth. That was when the car was a piece of art. That really looks cool. Let's uh, open up the interior, please. This, of course, has the red interior with the red dash, red dash pads. And this car is a NCRS top flight. Tell me what NCRS stands for. National Corvette Restoration Society. Okay. And it is a top flight. It also is a Bloomington Gold. And it also got the Diamond Award at the McCacken Car Show. And when you get all three within a time period, it's called a triple diamond. So this is a triple diamond car, which is pretty much the highest that you can go. So the bottom line, the bottom line is this is just an awesome car. Yes, awesome looking. It's got a very nice pedigree. 
and it does meet all the standards. This is pretty much how it looked out of the showroom. Just like it came out of the showroom in 61. What's the, uh, what's this pole right here? Those are the vents. The vents, okay. Yes. Got it. Those are the vents. This is a non-air conditioned car. I like how the mirror sits there to and look better. And this is still the year that they had heater and radios were options. Heaters and radios are options. Let's take a look under the hood. This is a, what they call a dual quad car. It has two carburetors. As you can see, and it's a 270 horsepower. So it's the highest horsepower without getting into the, um, they had fuel injection back in 57, all the way through um, on up. And as you see, it's got the correct GM hoses, the markings, the labels. This is pretty much how it looked out of the showroom. This is exactly like it looked out of the showroom. Yeah. It this has the correct clamps, the hose clamps, the old screws, what they call tower type clamps. And this also still has a generator, not an alternator yet. They really didn't come with alternators until 1963. You can see the, the generator up there, completely rebuilt, the original generator. It's all the original block, heads, um, everything. Amazing. Dominic, just, just amazing, the time capsule. So let's start her up. That's hard to not get the smile off your face when we do that, right? There it goes, yes. <laughs> yeah, there it's go. hard to drive this car without smiling. Yeah, no doubt. Come on out. I want to talk to you a little bit about driving this car. So now that we've now that we've seen the the top 61 Corvette for all intensive purposes, and, and how did you become, how did you start as a car guy? How did this kind of all happen? Well, I was born, and the minute I was born, I think I was a car person. <laughs> I don't know when it happened, but I always loved cars. And when I was in high school, I started painting cars as a hobby. Really? And I got my first car when I was 15. And from then on, I always had at least one or two cars, always working on them. And um, pretty much, I always just loved cars, loved working on them. And uh, my father really wasn't into cars, so I didn't get it from him. Yeah. I just enjoyed working on it. And my lovely wife also enjoys working on cars, so together we have a very unique collection of cars. Yeah. We go to all the car shows and um, we try to help the younger community get into cars. They were one of the sponsors at the McCacken Car Show for youths to get into the sport. That's cool. To make sure they understand how to work on cars and, um, you know, the old days when you could actually work on a car without a computer. So tell me about why the 61? Why was this car so special? Well, it's a straight axle car. So it's probably uh, the, what they call a C2. Yes. And you just feel the road. You got the big steering wheel because there was no power steering. The suspension, you could actually feel the road. It's basically a straight axle, meaning in the back, it's one axle. So when you go over a bump, the car goes this way. It wasn't until 63 that they were all independent, which all the cars are now. So there's something unique about driving a car where you just feel like you're back in the 60s, yeah. but you can't get that feeling with newer cars. You just can't. So, so last question for you. What's the reaction when you're driving this car from people? You know what? 
um, the heads just turn at this point. <laughs> and people will point and, and it's amazing that we are lucky enough to have some newer cars that are probably more money than this car and people don't even look the other way. You take this on a road and you literally, you got people that'll almost run into you. It's an instant friend maker. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Dominic, thanks so much for being on My Car Story. What a treat. Thank you.